Here are a few of the strangest things firefighters actually get called for. Number eight, walking a fine line. What's the hottest thing to do in China lately? Okay, maybe this isn't the hottest thing that people do, but it could have literally been the hottest thing someone could do. Firefighters in China had to rescue a drunk man who had spent three hours walking on high voltage power lines. Yes, there was a dude in China who got so drunk that he scaled a pole to a height of a whopping 32 feet before going onto the overhead of power cables. Are we sure it's just alcohol here? The bizarre incident took place in the Chinese city of Quanzhou in the southeastern Fujian province. Firefighters first tried to talk the guy down with a megaphone, but that didn't get them very far. Turns out that the kind of drunk person who climbs up to walk on live electrical cables isn't that easy to reason with. Next up, the fire crews positioned an inflatable mattress underneath him, and that gave them a bit more time to think and come up with the next move. Unfortunately, the man kept walking on the cables and they frequently had to shift the position of the mattress. After a while, they decided to call for reinforcement. A cherry picker was brought in to corral in this crazy dude. But you know this story couldn't just end that easily, right? The man on the cables wandered too close to one of the firefighters who had climbed the tree. So what the firefighter do? Grab the guy and just pushed him down onto the inflatable mattress. Miraculously, even after three hours up on the cables and getting pushed down to the inflatable mattress, the guy was not hurt. Do you guys have any friends as crazy as this guy? Let us know in the comment section. Number seven, best date ever. What's the craziest thing you guys ever do on a Tinder date? Whatever it is, there's no way it's crazier than what this girl did. This girl had to be rescued by firefighters during a Tinder date because she got stuck in a window. Why? Because she was trying to retrieve her own poop that she threw out the window. Just why? The unnamed girl went out for dinner with grad student Liam Smith before going back to his place for a nightcap. What did he feed her at dinner though? Crazy pills? The bizarre chain of events unfolded after she went to the bathroom. She apparently had a huge dinner, so she definitely filled up the toilet. And she completely blocked up the toilet and it would not flush. So in a panic, she did what any insane girl would do, and she picked up her own poo and threw it out of a window. However, what she didn't know was that the window didn't go anywhere out in the open. The poop fell down into a narrow gap between the bathroom window and the neighboring property. Embarrassed, she actually confessed to her date, who bravely came to the rescue. Would any of you guys give a second date to this girl? Seeing this one possible solution, he went upstairs to find a hammer and chisel to smash the window. However, already being too embarrassed already and not wanting to cause additional property damage, she got another idea. Being an amateur gymnast, she was convinced that she could reach into the window and pull the poop out using the tried and tested inside out bag as a glove technique. Her date helped lower her out of the bathroom window and into the gap between the houses in an attempt to retrieve it. However, this is where the firefighters got involved. She got wedged upside down. So in order to rescue her, firefighters had to break the window anyways. Because Smith was a broke student, he launched a GoFundMe page to replace the broken window, which raised over $3,500 by the time it was finished. After covering the expenses for his window, he donated the rest of the money to two charities. Toilet Twinning, a charity that's maintaining toilets in developing countries, and of course, the Firefighters Charity. Number six, RuPaul. Firefighters do get called for random snakes. However, it's even weirder when firefighters and police get called for a two foot long snake still attached to someone. This python was actually someone's pet and named after RuPaul, the famous drag queen. When firefighters showed up, RuPaul showed no signs of letting go. The mini drama unfolded back in 2017 when dispatchers sent police and firefighters to a South Buffalo address for a snake bite call. When they got there, they found a ball python with its teeth and body still wrapped around the left hand of a 26 year old woman refusing to let go. No, no, you can't can pet my snake, he doesn't bite. Psych! Ball pythons, while they aren't poisonous, do have 80 or so short but sharp inwardly facing teeth. If they don't want to let something go, there's almost no way to forcibly pry their jaws loose. Fire dispatchers had no clue what to do. They had to call the SPCA for advice. The dispatcher said to try spraying the python's snout with rubbing alcohol or pouring cold water over its head. They decided to go with pouring cold water over RuPaul first because, come on, who wants to be the one spraying rubbing alcohol up a snake's nose? But voila, within a few minutes, RuPaul finally let go of the poor girl's hand. 
Mike Nostro said that his ex-girlfriend had come over to his place to give the python a warm bath in the tub. Seriously, that's a thing? Pythons get warm baths? The python was named RuPaul because Mike's ex-girlfriend, the actual owner, wasn't able to tell if it was male or female when she got him. According to him, RuPaul had never bitten anyone before. Maybe RuPaul just didn't like his owner. Number 5. Nose Beers Again Houston fire crews got an unusual call about a woman who was stuck in an air vent of a home listed for sale. Firefighters arrived at the scene after Arthur Reyes called 911 about screaming noises he heard from a vacant house. It's still nice to know that people will still call 911 when they hear screams. Apparently, Reyes first asked her if she was trying to break into the home. That's just a dumb question because who's dumb enough to say yes to that? She just responded by asking him to get her a bottle of water. That's when Reyes went to a nearby gas station, told the clerk what was going on, and called 911. Firefighters arrived at the scene just before 4.30 in the morning because, of course, all of these things happen in the middle of the night. It took a heavy-duty rescue crew from the Houston Fire Department to extract the 30-year-old woman who was stuck in the vent. An attempt to pull her back through the roof failed, so she was pulled down into the house. The woman identified only by the name of Dixie had nothing to say when she was loaded into an ambulance. Apparently, she was the house owner's niece-in-law, who was a bit, um, troubled and got kicked out of her aunt's house a few times before. And, in case you were wondering, yes, white powder found in a bag was in her possession. That should be enough for someone to get stuck in the vent of a house. Number four, the fish strikes back. Here's a great life tip for everyone. Don't put anything that's still alive in your mouth. A prank almost proved to be the last trick performed by a 28-year-old man when he tried to swallow an entire live fish. Obviously, you guys know what happened. The fish got stuck in his throat. The man had just caught the five and a half inch fish and had put it over his mouth as a joke, but the fish wriggled free and jumped down his throat, causing a complete blockage. Paramedics were called and when they arrived, they first thought the guy was already done. He had already stopped breathing. Despite that, the paramedics artificially ventilating him with a bag and a mask, his chest remained silent, suggesting there was a total airway occlusion and he wasn't getting any oxygen. However, the paramedics didn't know the whole situation because they only found out that he had an entire fish stuck in his windpipe after they asked his friends if there was anything else they needed to know. One paramedic was able to eventually dislodge the tip of the fish tail and tried to remove it carefully so the fish wouldn't break apart. However, the fish's barbs and gills were getting stuck on the way back up. They knew they had to get it right because if a piece broke off and the fish slid further out of sight, then there was nothing more they could have done to save the guy. Eventually, after six attempts, the fish amazingly came out in one piece. Number three. Rescue me too! You guys know the usual story. Firefighters get called to rescue a cat that's stuck on a tree or something. However, this story has a little twist. This time it's a story about a woman who climbed a tree to rescue her cat who had to be saved by firefighters because she got stuck up in the tree too. Maria Perry's husband was forced to call the fire rescue crew after his wife got stuck 12 feet up in the tree while trying to reach their cat, Harry. <laughs> Harry was gone for three days and was found by Maria after she heard some scared meows. Maria, who happened to be scared of heights, climbed up the tree after she saw him. She said she wasn't even thinking much and just climbed up the tree by instinct. However, once she found the cat, she realized she was stranded and had to call her husband. Her husband asked her if she's able to come down and that's when she realized just how far off the ground she was. Her husband called the firefighters, but they were not that thrilled about doing another usual cat rescue. But they jumped to action as soon as they heard a woman was stuck up in the tree too. Maria and Harry were stuck for 45 minutes before firefighters were able to rescue them, making this a kind of cute story about a woman who just wanted to rescue her cat. Number two, the real Ratatouille. When rats get stuck, who do they call? Yep, firefighters. A chubby rat found itself in trouble after it tried to squeeze through a small gap in a sewer cover in Germany. Two girls found the rat stuck in the manhole, and that's when they took pity on the rat and called the authorities. A multi-agency rescue operation had to take place in order to free the fat, oversized rat. The rat was apparently still plump with winter speck, which translates literally to winter bacon and refers to the few extra pounds it piled on in the colder months. Of course, the rat became stuck after it tried to squeeze through a small gap in the sewer cover. Photos of the rat showed its head and plump body poking out of the hole with its bottom half obscured by the sewer cover. Come on, doesn't it seem like this little guy literally looks like he's calling for help? The 
the volunteer fire brigade was called in, as was the local animal rescue team. Eight rescuers had to work together to raise the cover and pull the rat free. After a 25 minute rescue operation, the fire brigade finally was able to free the rat. The fire brigade said that they didn't mind saving a rat and that even animals hated by many deserve some respect. For their efforts, the two girls who called the situation in drew a picture of the fat rat surrounded with hearts as a gift for the firefighters. Hey, guess things are a bit slow in Germany. Number one, walls, walls, walls. Apparently, getting stuck between walls is a thing in China. Firefighters rescued a woman in China's northern Hebei province after she got stuck between the walls of two buildings. The woman fell while trying to pick up some items from the 16-inch gap between the walls. She hurt her arm and didn't have the strength to get up and called for help to free herself. Once firefighters arrived, no equipment was required. She just needed a skinny fireman to slide in between the walls and slowly nudge the woman out. Chinese emergency services have been called out to rescue people wedged between buildings for quite a while now. A woman in Feidong, the city in the Anhui province, decided to take a shortcut on her way home by slipping through the narrow gap between her neighbor's houses. She was stuck for more than seven hours until the firefighters arrived. Here's what's next. 